everybody. It's lovely to have you all here. And uh, I have to thank you for all your efforts because uh, time uh, is uh, challenging because we have some people, for them it's breakfast and some others it's uh, almost evening. And uh, so uh, it's really challenging. It's really good to have you all there. So we are going to start our session with a keynote with uh, Dr. Thompson. Uh, is an architect and the director of Echo Solution and is in Brisbane, Australia. Dr. Thompson, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And um, yes, it is uh, six o'clock in the evening here in Brisbane, Australia, and unfortunately it's very wet outside. But I'm delighted to be able to join World Wood Day for what is day two. And um, I'm hopeful that um, I'll be able to share with you some thoughts and ideas uh, in relation to wood protection. So I'll get straight into the presentation. So I've called this valuing wood by design. And I feel very strongly that um, uh, design is going to be one of uh, the ways in which we're able to get maximum value out of what is a really precious asset, which is our wood. Uh, a quick overview of this presentation is that uh, I'm an architect. I've got about 30 years commercial experience. And what I hope to do is share with you how the value of wood can be compromised unless it's properly protected. I'll be talking generally about the durability of wood and uh, the importance of building up knowledge on this topic, and particularly something that is often overlooked, which is maintenance and wood protection requires regular maintenance. And this is something in the commercial world that unfortunately we're not seeing enough of. More importantly, wood or sustainable timber is a renewable and re reusable source. And this is the reason that we can actually talk about timber being such an important material for our next generation. So um, why is the protection of wood critical for our future? Today I'd like to share some knowledge I've gained in working with wood um, and in particular, talking about a home that I built for my own family here in um, Brisbane, Australia. And I wish to reinforce why um, the building of a timber home provided a huge insight to me as an architect into the benefits of not just working with a natural material, but understanding a whole lot of durability and protection issues related to wood. Now, when you are designing your own home, you take um, great care in getting the best value for your money. Um, so it becomes incredibly important for you to make correct selections and to ensure that you are utilizing the material as efficiently as possible. So my own home, which is now some 20 years old, uh, and in fact, I'm no longer the owner of this home, um, I'm proud to say actually gained me three architectural awards you know, in its day. Um, I'm proud to say that from the point of view that it won an award for sustainability. It won a local or a regional architectural award. But more importantly, it also won an award which was um, chosen by not my peers as other architects, but by people um, as uh, an important approach in terms of the efficient use of materials. Now, when you're using one predominant material for your, um, for your project, it provides you with a lot of opportunity. And this next slide is my house laid out in a uh, factory here in Brisbane. Um, so one of the unique things about this particular project was it was largely uh, hybrid prefabricated. And one of the benefits in prefabricating off-site is it provides you with the opportunity to uh, protect and use uh, timber and wood in a way that you can solve a lot of the problems that you have on site out in the weather by uh, working off-site. This is uh, the house under construction. And as you can see, we largely panelized what is marine plywood or um, 
uh, basically the, it's an engineered um, timber house made predominantly out of um, LVL and marine plywood. So we were able to largely make up panels in the factory and then bring the, uh, the timber in panels to the site and erect it. And the benefit of this approach was that we were able to very rapidly assemble the building on site. Um, this was much quicker than the traditional building approach at the time. And by using um, um, some lifting equipment and a small number of men, we were able to erect the building. And the great thing about this process was that most of the timber finishes were in place at the time that the house was um, erected. So the engineered timber uh, as a living environment is a fantastic environment to live in. We use the natural uh, effect of timber in terms of uh, plywood and uh, in this case it's largely hoop pine and um, local timber and we were able to create an environment that's really warm, has a natural um, feeling to it and was a very comfortable place to live. But some of the things that I, I learned, um, and some of which I knew before, but uh, there are a couple of things that I paid a lot of attention to in the development of this design. And first but foremost, it's the understanding that wood needs to be protected. The structure of the house needs to be protected. And as you can see by this little slide, you'll see that the floor joists and uh, the floors were all totally protected by uh, the weather. We used LVL posts, um, which were elevated up off the ground. These were painted, but you can see by this rather unusual little detail. And so this house um, has 63 uh, supports on very small pad footings um, on the site. And one of the reasons for adopting this approach was to ensure that we kept the timber dry, the and we were able to elevate uh, the building above termite attack because in my particular area, uh, termites are a massive problem. So we were able to not only uh, move the timber away from termite attack, but by using metal uh, stirrups and uh, a very simple footing system, this house was able to be largely placed on site and the footings were placed after the building was propped up on site again, a very unusual way to build in this part of the world, but a very successful way to ensure that you get the maximum value and durability for your design. Now, one of the learnings one has um, over time is that the, the ideal that you want at the time you design and the reality 20 years later can be quite two different things. See from these two photos, the left is an early photo and the right is a photo taken only last year. And the current owner has decided that the clear stain timber finishes that we were using were not as durable or not as uh, easy to maintain as is local acrylic water-based paint. So the whole house has actually been painted predominantly to uh, ensure that its durability and its protection is quite easy uh, to maintain and is quite costly because there, there are considerably greater costs in keeping clear finished timber um, treatments and, um, and stains than what there is with um, normal acrylic paint. Now, some people get very upset when they see that uh, timber buildings are painted different ways, but in actual fact, the learning for me as the original architect is that it's important that one recognises the life cycle of the timber and the materials that you're working with, because it's by understanding this at the design stage and then thinking forward 20, 50 years, the true value of the material is fully realised. So as a commercial architect only over many years, I've come to realise that maintenance of timber, maintenance of wood, has to be one of the primary things that needs to be addressed at the time of design. 
And I regret to say that in many projects that um, are, uh, that happen here and no doubt around the world, we don't pay enough attention to the protection and maintenance of our buildings until it's too late. So wood is an amazing material. Um, it's, it's important that we protect it for the next generation. And um, the other challenge that wood has at the moment is a number of environmental challenges. So it's important when one's thinking about the durability and the, um, the maintenance of wood, that one thinks about the next generation and looks at ways that we can get maximum value from such a material. So the reason I used timber 20 years ago in my own home was I believed it was the truly sustainable material. But what I've come to learn since is that it's very important that you get all the details correct and that you understand many aspects of the wood or the timber that you're working with because there are many traps in the marketplace whereby you may be using something that turns out to be illegal or is not from uh, the location that you thought it should have come from. And I say again, one of the key messages of this presentation is to make sure that detailing is one of the key things to ensuring wood durability and understanding the protection methods that are available and also that are appropriate at the appropriate at the your location, these become critically important things to be aware of. But wood is a, an amazing material, it can be recycled and reused and to get maximum value from it, we need to be recycling and reusing almost every bit of wood in the marketplace at the moment, because it's a precious resource and it's one that we need to protect. Interestingly, from an environmental point of view, it is a carbon sink. So it goes some way to assisting some of the climate change and environmental issues that are um, a bigger issue for our planet. It's 100% biodegradable and it can have a positive effect on your physical and mental health. So there are seven good reasons why timber should be at the forefront of your selection when you are considering not only a home for yourself, but also a working environment. Now, one of the current challenges that the world is having with, um, with the changing climate is that we are witnessing the destruction of many of our forests, uh, either through deforestation, or as is the case in Australia here um, uh, last year, we had these amazing catastrophic bushfires. And of course, um, these, these are horrible events and events that I regret to say are happening all around the world. So this is putting even additional pressure on the use of timber and wood as a viable material. But the good news is, is that the durability of timber is such that here in Australia, many of the burnt forests and certainly many of the plantations that were burnt in those um, catastrophic fires have been able to be salvaged. And the, the characteristic of timber and the durability of it is such that many of these timbers have been able to be logged within 12 months without any major detriment to the quality of the timber. So although um, uh, the world generally is faced with changing environments, timber becomes an amazing material and a uh, sustainable material that we as designers and we as a community should be demanding and valuing more so than many other materials. And one of the reasons for that is that timber has an amazing capability in storing carbon. And not only is there carbon stored in pots, but it's also stored in timber and wood products long after the trees are harvested. So the, the amazing characteristic of timber and wood is that not only is it an amazing material to work with, but it's actually part of the solution for many of the climate and environmental issues that we are facing on the planet today. But as I've learnt, um, sustainable forest management is the critical thing that is required to ensure that this valuable asset is uh, available for the next generation and the generation after that. There's a lot of debate in terms of 
whether forests should be touched at all. But in actual fact, uh, in order for timber and wood to be sustainable, we must make sure that we have um, forest management and growing techniques both in existing forests and in future forests to ensure that this does become a renewable and sustainable matimba uh, material. And the good news is that in the environmental scene, the United Nations has identified 17 sustainable development goals. And timber and sustainable forestry is um, a very important part of meeting many of these sustainable development goals around the world. So what I'm trying to do here is to make a strong link between the environmental um, criticisms of timber you value it, you maintain it, and you protect it. And when you understand that um, uh, certified timber, which is the renewable timber that I'm talking about, we do have large stocks available, and that 62% um, uh, of all forests worldwide are now certified forests. There are two major global certification systems, uh, FFC and PEFC. And PEFC seems to be having a, a greater coverage of the planet at the moment. So it's great that we can now say that many of the forests, not all of them, but many of the forests are now being protected by certification methods, which are a vast improvement on what we've had previously. So here in Australia, I'm an independent director for an organisation called Responsible Wood. And the point of difference of Responsible Wood is that it uses PEFC forestry certification and enables local people to actually choose a locally grown material or locally grown timber. And one gets um, what's called chain of custody understanding to actually understand where that piece of timber originated from. And this becomes very important in terms of making sure that illegal timber hasn't been used. And that one of the other big issues facing the world today, which is uh, the illegal use of labor and the use of child labor, it makes sure that those sorts of practices are avoided by working with certified timber from sustainable sources. And what's particularly appealing is that there is a guarantee that the certif certified bodies are now providing that they will ensure that any harvested tree from a certified forest will actually be replaced. And this is the only way that we can say timber is a renewable product and one that will be valuable, not only now, but for the future, because we are able to sustain it and use it, uh, hopefully more and more as a carbon sink, which will go some way to mitigate climate change issues which we seem to be facing right around the planet. But timber has been a material valued by generations and cultures for, for many years. This Japanese cypress has been maintained by Buddhist monks since um, 6007 AD. And uh, when one goes and visits such buildings, you, you stand in awe of the fact that the wood is so old. But then you need to also understand that it, the reason that it is lasting the way that it is, is that it has been looked after, it has been protected, and it has been maintained. Because without that stewardship of the material, the material will decay like any other material like steel and concrete. So it's important that in understanding the characteristics of different woods, one understands the opportunities that they have to get maximum value. And one of the things uh, by those working with wood is that unfortunately we have some amazing new knowledge being developed but there is a lot of traditional knowledge that seems to be um, lost. We have experienced carpenters who have been working with timber with their hands, and now many of these techniques have been replaced by cutting machines and computers. 
and it's this knowledge whereby carpenters have been able to feel, smell and understand density and hardness of timber, which is not being lost, but it's not being carried through the way that it can be to younger generations. We, we see globally at the moment that a piece of wood is a piece of wood, but in actual fact, a piece of wood needs to be fit for purpose in its use. And the species, the type, the treatment and the durability aspects of that wood need to be understood. But unfortunately, wood as a commodity can be dumbed down to allow people to think that it's just a very simple material. But in actual fact, it's an amazing natural material that one needs to understand. The ageing of um, wood is understood by traditional carpenters. They understand that it's the air that oxidises the timber. And in the past, they've used either heat treatments or uh, fire treatments to accelerate the ageing and provide protection to the wood. So I think it's really important that the wood wisdom that we've gained over many um, years is retained and passed on that uh, our methods of mass production continue, but our detailed methods of traditional knowledge that uh, continue. Now the, the unfortunate side of wood, depending on how you look at it, is that it, like all good things in life, will be attacked. And nature will be primarily one of the things that will attack. So beetles, uh, borers and decay and fungi are things that will um, attack a piece of timber to where you are and what environment you're living in. But as an architect, but also as uh, any person dealing with wood, it's really important to understand the durability characteristics of timber. And over the years, we don't tend to talk about species of timber or wood in the way that we used to. We're now being uh, trained to think about durability characteristics and classifications of wood. So the good news is, is that this is helping us to get um, uh, guaranteed life out of wood and timber. The bad news is that it's weakening some of this traditional knowledge and wisdom that has been built up uh, with timber and wood over hundreds of years. So as, as a young architect, uh, not that I am these days, but young architects that I talk to are now being trained in ha hazard categories and given an enormous amount of information in terms of uh, not only the type of timber they need to use, but the different treatments, preservatives and hazards that are appropriate to use the wood in. So um, one of the things that younger people don't seem to understand these days in the way that perhaps traditional craftsmen have in the past is that uh, wood species, different species need to be treated different ways and one needs to understand the timber and the science of the timber to understand the best treatment method to give it natural durability. So we're, we're fortunate now that the timber industry and the construction industries have an enormous amount of information out there, which is pr provided to help the consumer and help people working with wood better understand these things. These are the other natural elements of our environment that are direct, um, that cause direct harm to wood. As I said, in my part of the world, uh, termites are the major problems that we have. And any wood literally left on the ground can be expected to be attacked by termites unless it is um, treated a particular way. And it's not just uh, insects and bugs, it's also other parts of uh, nature, whether it be fungi or algae or other chemicals that will go some way to attack timber and to affect its durability and its, um, its ability to serve the task at hand. But as I said, the good news is, is that we have developed um, in the modern world, many protective methods and oils. 
And oil has been a traditional material used to protect timber. And you can see from this slide, the difference between a well-oiled deck and a natural deck. Um, and the oil is something that is absorbed into the timber and becomes um, uh, a, has a chemical reaction to the timber to help give it stronger protection. And it's quite amazing that um, we are seeing timber and wood being used in really extreme conditions and some of the treatments and some of the protective measures that are being adopted are giving wood uh, a life in a way that other materials, even steel and concrete, may not have the longevity or the fitness for purpose in a way that timber can provide. But the preservative types that one needs to understand can also have their own environmental issues. So this is the next challenge of our generations to come is to ensure that the toxic chemicals or any toxic chemicals used on timber are recorded correctly so that we understand that we shouldn't burn particular treated timber and we should treat timber very carefully after it's been um, preservative treated. So we're now as responsible um, environmentalists looking at uh, uh, solutions and preservatives that have less impact on the environment. But occasionally these are also not as effective as some of the other treatments that we've developed over a period of time. One of the other methods of protection that we've seen come back, which is uh, uh, being used predominantly in Japan over many years, is the fire treatment of uh, timber. And we're realising now that uh, timber, when it's charred, actually forms an insulative um, surface and actually provides that protection from a fire point of view. And it's because of the research and testing that's been done that we're now able to build CLT and timber buildings to very high and modern fire standards because the thickness of the timber is designed and understood in terms of its resistance to fire. But again, uh, one of the challenges is that different types of materials, different treatments and different, uh, uh, different uses of timber all get mixed up. And so consumers and sometimes designers and builders will make mistakes by not understanding the different expansion of timber, the different expansion of wood, different treatments that are required to get a fit for purpose solution. And the qualities of durability and treatment just don't happen by accident. It's important to understand the weather conditions that you're working with and to make sure that the treatments that you use on the timber are actually designed to be fit for purpose again, but to be resilient to the environmental conditions in which they're used. So this is an, an interesting example showing how uh, um, there can be an appearance difference to what is effectively the same treatment. So you can see that um, the treatment on the left looks like it's old and grey, but that's just the natural ageing of the timber. The treatment of the right is a, a, a new oil finished, which will eventually age to the treatment on the left. So again, the other characteristic that timber has and the treatment of timber has is an aging effect. And if this is not properly understood, this can be seen to be a negative attribute to wood, which needs to be considered and um, valued. So in our modern day world, we're being offered more and more options in terms of how we can treat wood. There are many colors, many stains, many methods, but it's become even more critical and important to understand what it actually is that you're using on timber. And the reason for that is that to get the maximum value out of timber, we need to understand its durability. We need to understand how it's being used and we need to ensure it's protected correctly. 
One of the key things I'm wanting to share with you in this presentation is a, a trend that I hope that the world will see more and more, which is what I call design for deconstruction. This is a building built a few years ago at Macquarie University here in Australia, and this building was designed so that it could be deconstructed. And what I mean by that is in the design of this building, it, everything is being considered so that the building can be relocated to a different place. And the, the attribute that this provides is that such solutions can actually ensure that wood um, continues as a sustainable material. I'm conscious of time and um, there are design for deconstruction techniques, which I encourage you to investigate. And what we're seeing more and more is buildings being considered for design for deconstruction. They can look like modern buildings, but the way they're put together are very important to understand so that they can actually be deconstructed and be reused either in their current form or recycled in different ways. We're seeing a whole array of fasteners and fixings that are necessary to work and are very uh, sophisticated so that uh, the treatments that exist in, in some timbers have to match the fasteners that are being used. And, and when one really understands what's possible, the fasteners and the fixings can become part of the design of the solution. And I, I just grabbed this uh, little quote from uh, the US president, the devil is in the detail and it makes a great deal of difference, that detail. So unless the timber and the wood is detailed correctly, the durability and life and appearance of such things Range. We're starting to see some wonderful buildings being built around the world. These are some of the examples of certified timber buildings um, in the World Architecture Festival over the past few years. This building in particular you can see is designed to fit into its landscape and will eventually take the natural tones and colours of the landscape. So design has been the thing that adds value to this particular solution. Another project uh, which was a winner in the World Architecture Festival is a community centre. And again, the selection of local timber uh, became really important and the way that it's designed and used to ensure that um, it's fit for purpose is quite remarkable. But I'm going to leave you with the, the idea, hopefully, that the future of design is cities of wood and that uh, durable wood is what we need to be focusing on. The treatments and protection of wood is the real opportunity for our future generations. In addition to this, we're starting to realize that wood has other benefits, uh, better known as a biophilic effect. And we're starting to see that by surrounding ourselves with natural materials like wood, we're actually improving our well-being and uh, reducing blood pressure and stress on ourselves. I'd like to finish up and share with you a particularly good book that's been um, <clears throat> released recently called Tomorrow's Timber. And um, I would really recommend this um, as an excellent publication that talks about many of the aspects of timber use. <clears throat> so to finish up, I'd like to leave you with the following take home concepts, that wood needs to be protected to get its optimum value. And that if wood is designed correctly, it can be durable and can last for hundreds, if not thousands of years. There's an amazing amount of uh, industry assistance from timber and construction industries specializing in wood and timber. And it's really important to connect with those organizations. And more importantly, one must understand where the wood comes from. It's important to ask for the claim on the wood to understand its use. And this is why certified timber from certified sustainable forests are so important to understand. So in the future, we need to make wood more sustainable and more renewable by design. And I hope this presentation, albeit very general, has uh, 
inspired you to look at wood in a different way and to every time you see wood being used um, you might think about the complexity of the durability the treatments and the love often that goes into it to develop wonderful environments so i might finish up there understanding that i think that's right on time and um, see if there are any questions that may have uh, arisen during this presentation. I, I don't apologize that it's been a very general presentation, but um, hopefully um, important for people to, to understand these key points that I'm hoping to share with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Thompson, for this uh, really, really inspiring presentation. Uh, having a look at the chat, so far we have no questions, but I would like to um, uh, support that. It was a really, really uh, nice presentation and you, you, you gave us all the steps, you know, to have a very um, durable building, all the problems coming with wood, how to do uh, with the renewable material. That was really, really good and your illustration were great, you know, it was just perfect. Um, uh, See, so because we're gonna run out of time, I'm not asking my, myself a question. Um, oh, there's a question. Um, Say, so, um, our Ifugao traditional houses use a mortise and tenon method of putting the houses together. There are no nails whatsoever. So I suppose that can be also a solution for deconstructing easily. It's interesting that uh, modern day architecture is looking back at some of these mortise and tenon connections and uh, with the advent of uh, CNC machines and computer cutting, we're able to deliver some of these connections in a way that it probably wasn't economical a number of years ago. So um, I think it's really exciting in the building and design industries to see that uh, we need to look back sometimes in order to look forward, and see the potential and the possibilities using wood. But uh, design must take into account this durability issue and this protection issue, because I think young players can make a lot of mistakes and the value of timber, unless it's understood and put together properly, um, loses um, its importance. And unfortunately, the general public might think that um, it's not the valuable material that I believe it is and it should be for the future. Well, thank you very much. Um... So uh, we've got um, a, a comment from Dr. Digley saying it's an excellent presentation and is also oh, sorry, underlying that solar light with UV is also important, but that yes. is also a, a, a problem of maintenance uh, in some ways. Um, so I think we're going to stop here. Uh, I suggest that uh, people can contact you directly if they have other questions. Uh, thank you very much for this, um, again, very inspiring presentation, Dr. Thompson. Thank you very much.